Good evening, family, and welcome to the Embassy Church Online. We are so glad that you could join us this evening. Firstly, I would like to take this opportunity in honoring our spiritual parents, Pastor Vernon and Nisha Jacob, for this opportunity. And most of all, I want to give thanks to God, because if it's not for Him, I wouldn't be here to give His Word. So tonight, I want to talk to you about purpose in chaos. We are currently living in a time that is consumed by fear and weighted by extremely bad news. Not just as individuals, but the world as a whole is going through negative circumstances. We are engulfed by the COVID-19 pandemic. The economy is on a decline. Unemployment is on the rise. There's gender-based violence, racism, and the list just goes on. And amongst this, each of us are going through our own challenges. How do we deal with a storm that is bashing the life out of us? I'm here to say, hashtag, keep calm, God's got this. It may sound cliche when people say, God's got your back. Especially when the storm is getting stronger, the pressure of life is breaking you and you feel it's all over. Well, I'm here to say there is hope. Don't give up. And the hope in your life, His name is Jesus. He took the time to mold you. And He took the time to breathe His life into you. And when He created you, He inserted purpose inside of you. No matter the storm, you still have purpose in the chaos. So let me build a foundation for you. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 23, if you could read with me, in the scripture, when we, when we dive into it, I want you to put yourself in the story. I want you to substitute the storm with what you are going through. I want you to personalize the story to yourself. So the scripture says, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowds, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came, into the, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. When I read the story, I notice something very strange. Jesus sends his disciples ahead of him. He says, go. So it's the disciples that are on the ship. It's, it's just you on the ship. It's, it's your family and you and friends that are on this ship. Jesus sent you, but he is not there. Some of these disciples are fishermen. Some of them are equipped and have the knowledge of maritime. But then there's others that don't. Others that don't have enough faith. Others don't know how to handle the storms of life. So Jesus is not with them. God in flesh gave them the instruction and they complied. God gave you a word. You complied. But you are now surrounded by the storm. And when you search, you cannot find God. So when Jesus sends them, the weather is clear. It's conducive for sailing. There's no forecast of rain, let alone a storm. And Murphy's Law. I'm sure you know Murphy and his law. It's, for example, you can have car insurance for 10 years, 15 years, but the day you decide to cancel your premiums is the day you meet an accident and you have to claim. And the same thing happened to the disciples. The day they sailed out without Jesus on their boat, they encountered a storm. The Bible says the wind was against them. The wind was contrary to their destination. The wind was trying to blow the, blow the boat towards the opposite direction. The enemy knows the power that you are carrying inside of you. 
He knows what God has placed inside of you. And just the slightest movement towards your purpose, He will raise up a storm to stop you. A storm, He will raise a storm to either destroy you, delay you, or distract you from your purpose. The devil may have his eye on you. He's ready to bring you down. But there's someone who has their eye set on you. What is significant is that Jesus went up to the mountain to pray to the Father. Now from that mountain, scholars say, there is a clear view over the Sea of Galilee. So even though Jesus was not on the boat, he still had vision over his disciples. You may feel that Jesus is not in your midst, but he is watching over every movement of your life. So let's go through the experience of the storm. What could the disciples be feeling during this time? The waves would have been bashing them. The wind is howling and it's, it's about to toss this boat over. We are going through storms. The coronavirus is bashing us from all sides. There's debts that are piling up. You turn to the left, you get knocked down. You turn to the right, and there's no way out. You start to suffocate, and then fear grips you. It creeps in and begins to paralyze you. It paralyzes you spiritually, emotionally, and then physically. But wait, I just want you to pause and take time. Because Jesus said, go. I have given my life. You have given your life to Jesus. And his word says that he will not forsake us. He will not leave us. But I'm sure you've read that a thousand times. Maybe a hundred other scriptures that encouraged you about God being in your midst. You've read it a thousand more times. But there's no answer. The storm is just getting worse. As I said, wait, because verse 4 is on its way. Your verse 4, the enemy tried to destroy you. He tried to delay you. He tried to distract you. But Jesus is on the water ready to deliver you. When the disciples saw a figure in the storm, they assumed it was a ghost. Before this, before this entire encounter, the disciples saw Jesus as a great teacher. They witnessed him heal the sick. They witnessed him heal the blind. They saw him and they witnessed him calm the storm. But they've never seen him walk on water. And the water that he was walking on was not still water. The waves were, were at its high. And Jesus was riding the waves. At this time, Jesus defied the laws of nature. And as soon as Jesus gets onto the boat, the storm ceased. And the disciples worshipped him, saying, You are the Son of God. It is the first time it is recorded that the disciples referred to Jesus as the Son of God. Every other time, they referred to him as teacher, they referred to him as a rabbi, but this is the first time they say, Son of God. Ladies and gentlemen, every storm that you go through will reveal something great about our God. And no matter the severity of the circumstances, He can bend the laws of science, nature, medicine, just for you. As I said, the disciples knew Him as teacher, but now they know Him as the Son of God. The disciples had a purpose to fulfill. Jesus had a purpose to fulfill. The storm could not hold them back. The enemy tried to destroy what they supposed to achieve, but he was unsuccessful. Not all storms are created by the devil. There are storms in our lives that are created by God. And even though it's hard to admit, but it's due to our own doing. The decisions we make is contrary to the command of God. When God says, go, we, not the enemy, it is us that tries to destroy it, delay it, or distract 
us from the word God has given. Like a character in the Bible named Jonah, God gave him a word to go to Nineveh, but Jonah disobeyed God and decided to go the opposite direction. He decided to board a boat that was heading away from his purpose. The Bible says God sent a great wind and a storm arose. If you go to the scripture, it specifically says God sent the great wind, not the devil. When you head into your purpose, the devil will try to break you down. But when you're heading away from your calling, God will reroute you by any means necessary. Now, during this chaos, during this storm, the sailors started to throw their cargo overboard. They started to cry to their gods. They started to pray for help. Whilst this time, whilst all of this is happening, Jonah was fast asleep below deck. His sleeping was a state of insensitivity, insecurity, and inactivity. Your disobedience will not just affect you, but also impact those that are around you. I'm here to say, wake up and smell the coffee and obey God's word. Don't go the opposite direction. Follow the word of God. And once Jonah was thrown overboard, the storm ceased. And we know the story. The fish swallowed him up. And for three days, he spent his time in isolation. God gave him enough time to pray and seek his face. And he eventually reached Nineveh and preached God's word. When you understand who God is, what he has done for you, and what he is going to do through you, no storm will be able to break you. Stand firm. Pray. Have faith. God's got this. You still have purpose in the chaos. I pray that you've got a revelation and that God spoke into your spirit. No matter the storm that you have, remember, he still has your back. Let us pray. Mighty God in heaven, we come to you this time through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh God, for a word that we can stand on that assures us that you have our back. I thank you, O oh God, that no matter the storms in life, we still have peace and rest in Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that you will be part of our boat. You will be part of our crew, O oh God, that no matter what we go through, that we'll be able to overcome it through you. I pray at this time for your peace and your anointing and your blessing over your people. We thank you in Jesus' name. May God bless you and may you stay safe. Thank you for tuning in to our midweek meeting. We hope that you have enjoyed this teaching and that it has strengthened your spirit for the week ahead and deepened your understanding of the word. Thank you to all our financial partners that have helped us reach many people around the world. If you feel led to give today, please scan the Zappa code using your Zappa app now. Or you can add us as a beneficiary in your banking app or on your online banking using these details. Know that your giving allows this ministry to keep reaching many homes. So thank you for being a blessing. Remember to check out our social media pages throughout the week for updates and encouragement. Be sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel so you never miss an episode that will change your life. Ambassadors, we love and miss you. Please stay safe and continue praying for us as we pray for you.